Greetings, fellow detectives, and welcome to Boiler Room Detective. How to set and adjust the steam boiler pressure control. A question I'm often asked is how to properly adjust the steam boiler pressure controls. While it seems pretty straightforward, it's sometimes confusing because there are two different types of pressure controls for a boiler, subtractive and additive. The subtractive version is the most common type of pressure control. For the subtractive version, you set the pressure control for the desired pressure where you want to stop the boiler. This is also called the cutout pressure. In a brewery, that is around 10 to 11 PSI. For space heating, it's typically 2 to 3 PSI. The next adjustment is a differential setting. This is how many pounds you will allow the boiler to drop before resetting the burner. This is also called the cut-in pressure. The wider the differential, the better the efficiency. If the differential is too wide, though, the pressures may drop below the temperature or pressure required for the process. I usually set it for 2 PSI. A sequence of how these controls work is as follows. Start the boiler for a brewery and allow the pressure to build. Once the pressure reaches your operating control set point, 12 PSI, the burner shuts off. The burner stays off until the pressure inside the boiler drops to the differential setting minus the set point. In essence, our boiler will cycle between 10 and 12 PSI for an average steam pressure of 11 PSI. For space heating application, I set the pressure to cut out or stop at 3 PSI and the differential for 2 PSI. The boiler will operate between 1 and 3 PSI for an average steam pressure of 2 PSI. The following controls fall under the subtractive type of pressure control. The Honeywell L404 series, Danfoss KP series, but they have both subtractive and additive. Johnson Controls Pen P47 series has two settings, which makes it a bit easier to understand. They have two parallel vertical scales and adjustment screws. One scale is the cut-in setting, and the other is the cut-out setting. The additive type of control is a bit different to set and adjust. The number you see on the front is the boiler's cut-in or starting pressure. Inside the cover is a differential setting. If we want our boiler to operate between 1 and 3 PSI, we will set the cut-in for 1 PSI and the differential for 2 PSI. An example of an additive control is the Honeywell PA404 series of controls. If your boiler has a variable position burner, that adds an additional wrinkle to setting the pressure controls. Variable inlet burners include low-high-low low, and modulating. These type of burners have an additional pressure control called the firing rate control or modulating control. I set the firing rate control for a brewery for the desired steam pressure, 11 PSI. I increase the operating control to about 2 PSI above that setting. Once a boiler reaches a set point of the firing rate control, the burner will reduce the firing rate to keep the boiler operating longer. This allows a more consistent pressure and temperature for your process. On steam space heating applications, I set the firing rate for 2 PSI and the operating control for 2 pounds higher. The last pressure control on your steam boiler is the limit control. It is the last resort protection in case of a runaway boiler. The limit control should have a manual reset button. This control will shut off the burner and will not start again until the steam pressure drops below the set point minus the differential and the manual reset button is pushed. For breweries and distilleries, 
I set this for just below 15 PSI at the top of the scale. I'm skeptical of the accuracy at the far ends of the range on the control. Plus, the boiler relief valve is set for 15 PSI. I'm a bit leery of going too close to that setting and causing it to open and losing all our steam. On a space heating application, I typically set the limit control for 10 PSI. When testing the boiler pressure controls, I prefer doing it when the system is offline. I shut the boiler isolation valve at the steam outlet, and this way you can build up steam pressure inside the boiler alone. Once the controls are tested, you can open the valve and allow the steam into the system. If you do it while the pipes are filled with steam, the steam pressure may take a long time to drop. If you would like to contact me, my contact information is here. In addition, I have two websites. Brewingwithsteam.com has my monthly blog posts on steam systems for breweries, and Fire Ice Heat is my company website. I have written 11 books on boilers, and they are available on Amazon. In addition, you can find some of my writings in these fine publications. Thanks for stopping by Boiler Room Detective, and I hope to see you on the next case.